and welcome back to the Web Tree Three Tour. And our thing is going round in circles. What does that mean? It means it's, does that mean that we're not? Popular. Does that mean that we're probably not <laughs> live? Here you are. Okay. Welcome and sorry. We had a a thing happening on our screen. So I've got with me today Seth Green. He's the daddy of the green children that aren't really green, but they're green. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so Seth went through a pretty interesting week. His yeah. wife had surgery. Yeah. And during the course of that surgery, Seth did a study on worrying. Yep. And so I'm, I asked him to share it with, with y'all today because it's really, really a good study. So what I'm going to do is just move over out of the way and let Seth move up here. And he's going to... He's going to do a quick study on worrying, and then we're going to go into Revelation. Okay. So I'm going to move over. All right. To my coffee. Now, when I speak of this, is in the day of the surgery. Okay. Um, this is a Bible study on worrying. Uh, and I wrote this during uh, when she was in there for a little 45 minute uh, surgery for her wisdom teeth. Oh, wow. Ooh. There's my spelling. There. <laughs> You're good. Okay, here we go. As I started this Bible study, my stomach was bubbling, my anxiety was off the charts, and my hands were shaking. And the only way I can get through this was through y'all. You would think that I was getting the surgery, but my wife was. I really felt really bad for her. If I did not have the word, I would be a hot mess. But since I have been called by y'all, I know he will get me through this, and this too shall pass. Here are some scriptures about war. Somebody go to Proverbs 12, 25. All right. Tiff's got it, but you don't. You need it right now? See, senorita. Okay. You want to turn around or? Yeah, whatever you want to do. This is okay. your. I do. Right. I believe yeah, it. I'm moving next week. I'm going to see somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> this candy. Okay. Proverbs 12 25. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes him glad. That's a good word. And I felt this that day uh, before surgery. So what I did was to get closer to y'all by doing this study about what was bothering me, and all the answers are in the, are in this world. Uh, Matthew six twenty seven through thirty four was another verse about worrying. It's Matthew six twenty seven through thirty four. You want to read? Yes, ma'am. Right. And which of you, by worrying, is able to add one cubit to his lifespan? So why do you worry about clothing? No. Will the lilies of the field... No. Will the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin? And I say to you that even Shalok Shalom. Okay, Shalom. In all his esteem, was not dressed like one of these. But if Elohim so, so clothes the grass of the field, which exists today, and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, how much more <coughs> you, O oh, you of little belief? Do not worry then, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all these the nation seek for, and your heavenly Father knows what you need. All these, but seek first the reign, the reign of Elohim and His righteousness, and all these shall be added to you. Do not then worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow shall have its own worries. Each day has enough evil of its own. Oh, and I was, as I was going through this whole process, or she was going through this process. I was thinking to myself, like, man, I gotta take care. How am I gonna do this? Am I gonna have to call Valerie to help? Am I, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I'm like freaking out. But then I started reading this and going to the scripture, and it, and it says right there, "Do not worry at all. He will take care of you if you let him." And worry only leads to sin. Um, this is a constant reminder that we must give it to Him. We have the power to take it back, but we must first seek the reign of Elohim, and we have. We, and when we have the faith in him that everything will be okay, we can rest in knowing he is in charge and he will take care of us if we walk in his ways that he has provided for us to go. Um, Luke 12, 22 through 31. 
Luke? Yes, ma'am. If anybody wants to add anything, y'all get here. Got it. 12.22 12.22-31 And he said to his taught ones, For this reason I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you shall eat, nor about the body, what you shall put on. For life is more than the food, and the body is more than the clothing. Look at the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor granary. And Elohim feeds them. How much more valuable are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, is able to add one cubit to his lifespan? If then you are unable to do the least, why do you worry about the rest? Look at the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And I say to you, even Shalomo, in all his esteem, was not dressed like one of these. And if Elohim so clothes the grass, which today exists in the field, and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, how much more you owe you of little belief? And do you, do you not seek what you shall eat and what you shall drink? And do not keep worrying, for the nations of the world seek all these, and your Father knows that you need these. But seek the reign of Elohim, and all these shall be added to you. There it says it again, seek the reign of, reign of, reign of Elohim, and everything will be added to you. And you all know if it says it more than once, it must mean something. Yes, it right. Um Now, as I read this, my worry started to, lift, uh, to be lifted from me, and y'all says in Psalms 55, 22, Dennis. 55, 22. 22. Oh, I'm I know it. <laughs> 55, 22. Can we get our 11, 28 of Matthew? Oh, Psalms 55, 22 says, Cast your burden on Yahweh and let him sustain you. Mm. He never allows the righteous to be shaken. Amen. <laughs> Battery, Matthew eleven twenty eight. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I shall give you rest. Yep. So, and I've added one more. It's John 14, 1. Um, let, your, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in Elohim. Believe also in me. And then he's speaking, Yeshua is speaking to his disciples. Um, and finally, well, I got there's I want a couple more verses, but uh, first, if someone wants to go to First Peter five six through eleven. Humble yourselves then under the mighty hand of Elohim, so that He exalts you in due time, casting all your worry upon Him, for He is concerned about you. Be sober, watch, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a warning lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in the belief, knowing that the same hardships are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. And the Elohim of all favor, who called you to his everlasting esteem by the Son, Yahweh, after you have suffered and while himself, perfect, established, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the esteem of the might forever and ever. Amen. Now, and now it says resist him. This really helped me because it says resist him firm in belief and if you believe in him, you know he's going to take care of you. And knowing that the, the same hardships that I've I over exaggerate things sometimes, and I think like, "Oh man, poor me! I gotta go through this. Gotta take care of her, or whatever." But we're, we all go through things, and it might not be the same thing, but you know, we've all, you know, been there, and that's what we're here to help each other out with. But um, to conclude this, uh, this Bible study, and this is this is pretty good because the last time I actually really did a Bible study was when I was at a life house because I've been putting. I put work ahead. I, I make excuses for work and you know what I mean? And anything to stay out of scripture. But I need it more than anything. And I know that. And I felt it because I only did this, this study. And I know it's not long, but I did it 45 minutes. And then it was like I was typing it out on my phone like a little machine. And it was just like I felt the spirit and it felt awesome. But uh, then I challenge everybody the next time y'all are going through something. Uh, and we all get convicted for things, but, you know, and sometimes we get in our feelings and get hurt or whatever, but there's a reason why we're being convicted for that. 
But uh, the next time that uh, one of us is going through something, search it out in Scripture and uh, to get closer to them, you can do a Bible study and share it with us because we all learn from one another. And so one last verse is Philippians 4, 6 through 7. I'll get Valerie to read it. Mm-hmm. Little Val. Or little, little Val. Little Val. Let me know who I am. <laughs> do not worry at all, but in every matter by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to Elohim. And the peace that <coughs> surpasses all understanding shall guard your hearts and mine, the Messiah is sure. Mm-hmm. The end. Very good. Great. Thank you. That is very good. good. So I don't get to take a nap. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. You get a five minute nap time right there. I never <laughs> paid attention on that one verse um, seek you first the kingdom and his righteousness. There and was an and there. There's like steps. His commands, too, his righteousness, and then everything shall yeah. be added unto you. Like, I love that one. I guess it was a Matthew where he went first. Yes. And it said, that and seek his kingdom. And his righteousness. And all these things things shall be added unto you. It's a walk. So I don't know. I thought that was you were popped out. To me. Well, no, we get his revelation. Oh yeah, getting his hat back. Okay, now we are going to get started in Revelation, and we're only going to do the second chapter. And so, guys, listen. What do you think the seven churches are about? Because this, this whole chapter. And really, it goes on into chapter 3. But this whole chapter is about the churches and the messengers. So what do you think that's about? The assemblies. Do you think it's the churches that were in... uh, Let me tell you, this is one thing that I really want to find out. Every one of these churches are in Turkey. Every one of these uh, assemblies... Are in the, the country. <laughs> they are all of them. They're all turkeys. <laughs> every one of them. Every single, every single assembly is in Turkey. So what? Why? Uh, it, it, except that it's he's coming at us with revelation, and this is the revelation of Yahusha. It's not the revelation of John. John is who the revelation was given to, and that, that's what it says. And. The very first verse, the revelation of Yahushua Messiah, which Elohim gave him to show his servants, which what has to take place with speed. So this is Yahushua's revelation that that he gave to John. Okay? Yes, sir. What does revelation mean? It's it's like the the it's story. It's like it reveals itself to you, mm-hmm. right? Huh? It's like something that reveals itself to you. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. The revelation, it's the revealing of Yahusha. It's what it is. And so it's the really the revelation or the revealing of Yahusha, his second return. And that was a good question, Gwent. <laughs> so guys, is it, do y'all have anything that, that you might think is a reason for all these churches being in Turkey? They're not in Israel, not one of them. But they are places that Shaul went. Well, they're not where the Torah is. They're outside. Well, the Torah is actually in all these cities. Because these all have oh, temples. Right. Yeah, they all have temples. So, uh, in fact, I think John was actually arrested. It may have been in Ephesus where he was arrested. I know that, but I'm just saying the... And I know, but it's an outside... It's It's... I don't know what I'm trying to say. We all ate plates of yes. food, like this big <laughs> and like this pile, cool. especially Grant. And then he went back for pudding. And then Valerie, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah, she yeah. bypassed. Yeah, we had roast. We had, it was good food. We've I got really good cooks up here. It's a shadow of the Christian roots versus y'all's. I mean, it shows it is the trail that the Christians yeah. took for yes. sure because it was the Gentile nation that took this trail and exactly. I'm going to tell you it was who who, who we think is the beast mm-hmm. the beast is Roman Catholic Church they're the ones that carry huh uh, 
Ooh, that was a mean face. I knew it. Yes. Was, well, I haven't been here when you guys have been talking about this. That was something that was shown to me while it's away. Wow. Oh, wow. That is really cool. Okay, so we're going to get started reading. But I believe that these seven churches, are they were churches that were in existence at the time, but they are also a type and shadow of the church or the assembly exactly. ages mm -hmm. leading up to today. Okay, so we're actually going to go through, I think, the first four or five, and we're going to stop at the end of two, and then we're going to come back next week and start in three, and after we get through these, we're going to hit it and go faster, maybe. Okay. We're in chapter two, verse one. So the, the church of Ephesus was called the Apostolic Church, and it's represented by 30 A.D. after Yahushua's death to 70 A.D. And I, just listen to how they are described. To the messenger of the assembly of Ephesus write, he who is holding the seven stars in his right hand, who is walking in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, says this. Now, let's flip the page before, and I want you to see who the seven stars are and who the lampstands are. You after my salt? Are you after my salt covenant? <laughs> okay, uh, verse 20. The secret of the seven stars, which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are messengers of the seven assemblies. And the seven lampstands, which you saw, are the seven assemblies. So these are all the assemblies, are what um, most people would call today a church. Okay? But church has fallen a long way from what it started out as. Okay? I'm just going to say that. <laughs> Grant, you are so cute. Um, so this is the apostolic church. This is what represents the apostolic church. Okay, so he's writing it to Ephesus. In verse 2, I know your works. Works are important, right? And your labor and your endurance and that you are not able to bear evil ones and have tried those who say they are emissaries and are not and have found them false. So what does First John say? We are to test every spirit, right? We're to test the spirit, right? That is true. Test the spirits. Test, test the messengers, test the emissaries, test the spirit by the spirit. And if the, it does not line up with the scriptures, guys, don't listen to that person. You hear me? Yeah. Do not listen to that person. If they're teaching anything besides what we have learned in the scriptures, in, and I'm not saying just in our Bible, <laughs> but in the scriptures that have been written by Yah Yahusha, don't listen to them. Okay, uh, so they've tested the emissaries and and they, they found out that they weren't emissaries and they found them to be false. And you have been bearing up and have endurance and you have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. But I hold this against you, that you have left your first love. So remember where, from where you have fallen and repent and do the first works or else I shall come to you speedily and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Yet this you have, that you hate the works in, of the Nicolaites, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. To him who overcomes, I shall give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of Elohim. Okay, let's go back up here. Okay, verse 4. He said, but I hold this against you. You left your first love. Guys, that's the most important part. Our relationship with Yahushua. Look, he's talking about their works are great. Their labor is great. Their endurance is great. They haven't, been, they haven't stood for the evil ones, which, what is evil? Anything that's not of Torah. Deuteronomy 17. If it's not of Torah, it's evil. And you have tried those who say they are emissaries. So they've tested every teacher that has come along. But he holds this against them. And they're going to have to repent for it. They left their first love. How would you do that? 
Do y'all remember when you fell, first fell in love with Yahusha? Mm -hmm. Do you remember how excited? Fowler, you still got that excitement all over your face. <laughs> but do y'all remember that, that emotion and that feeling and that excitement? It was just like with the first boyfriend or when you first met your husband or it was that type of excitement. You couldn't wait to see him. You couldn't wait to write to him. You wanted him to call you all the time. Even if you just sat on the phone and listened to each other breathe, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, Grant's like, a little too crazy. Uh, that's a little lame. Right. Just just right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you're like, I'm so in love with you. I don't even know what to say. So it's that kind of excitement that we had with Yahusha. We're supposed to keep that, but what takes away from it? The works, the labor, the endurance. Listen enduring the words that people say to us you know what are y'all a bunch of jews yeah. it will wear on you won't it yes. grant you're fixing to start wearing z seats i can't wait you are yes he is he's he's we're we're fixing to get him the z seats and he's gonna be wearing the z seats and when you start wearing the z seats you're gonna have a lot of people come up to you and go what's that and you're going to say, there's these seats, and they're going to go, well, what's that? And you're going to explain it to them, and they're going to go, well, what are you, a Jew? I had that comment yesterday from my friend. What are you, a Jew? I get called a Jew boy at school. I get called Jew girl at home. <laughs> but guys, listen, we endure, don't we? And you know what, if they want to call me a Jew girl, that's okay. I'm not. I'm an Israelite. I choose to be Israel. But we have to endure all of the, the words that are going to come at us. And guys, listen, this is not persecution. We haven't seen persecution, but we're going to see persecution for the next church, the next assembly. <coughs> they go through horrible persecution. But we get so busy, guys, that we forget about our relationship with y'all. We forget about our relationship with Yahusha. Um. So remember from where you have fallen and repent and do the first works. Else I come to you speedily. So to me, this is saying that works is very important. <coughs> Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Look at James 2, 18 through 26. Uh, you got it? Here we go. What page? 1180. But some might say, you have belief and I have words. Show me your belief without your words, and I shall show you my belief by my words. You believe the Elohim is one, you do well. The demons also believe and shudder. But do you wish to know, O foolish man, that the belief without the works is dead? Was not Abraham our father declared right by works when he offered Yeshek his son on the slaughter place? Do you see that the belief was working with his works, and by the works the belief was perfected? Wow. And the scripture was filled, which says, Abraham believed Elohim, and it was reckoned to him for righteousness. And he called him he who loves Elohim. Mm. You see then that a man is declared right by works and not by belief alone. In the same way, was not Rahab the whore also declared right by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so also the belief is dead without the works. So guys, works are proof of belief. Right? Yep. And in the Christian churches of the Catholics or whatever they just said, you believe only uh, if you believe. You think that all, all it takes is belief. I mean, for them, belief is, what would it be called? It's not an action word. It's a state. I'm in a state of belief. I don't have to do anything because they don't have to do anything. All they have to do is choose him so that they know that he came, he was risen, and that he's coming back for us. That's okay. it. It's, yeah, the knowledge. So, um, let's see. I want us to look, also look at uh, Titus 1.16. And y'all don't really have to go there. They profess to know Elohim, but in works, they deny him. 
being abominable and disobedient and unfit for any good work. That's a, listen, guys, that's a loaded yep. verse right there. So, I'm sorry. I'm trying to hold my place and spin. Not easy. Okay, so they say they know him. What does John say? What does John say about those who say they know him, but they're not they're obedient? Liars. Yeah, they're liars. <laughs> they, John. At least Valerie didn't say liar, liar, pants on fire. Yeah. Think about that. And by this, and, and I mean First John, one, uh, two, ma'am. Does it say divorce me? No. That's not that. Okay, this is First John, and then Matthew. No, but you know what? We need to read that one too. This is First John two three, and by this we know that we know Him if we guard His commands. The one who says I know Him, and does not guard His commands is a liar, and the truth is not in Him. And that's what Valerie just said. And think about that. They profess to know him, but in works, they deny him. Well, think about that. I mean, that's really so, it's loaded. It, it, it is very loaded. And guys, this is something that I'm going to tell you. I saw it the day before yesterday. The Christians, especially the ones who've been through seminary, they cannot hear this and comprehend what we're saying. They really can't. Well, we, we have been in the past indoctrinated into something that's been passed down from generation. So it must must be true if it's been, you know, that's the thing about it. We, we're indoctrinated. But my big question is, when you're hit with verses like this, when you're hit with verses like Matthew 5, 16, when you're hit with all of the verses, well, Exodus 31, where he talks about the sign between me and my, my children is the Sabbath. When you're hit with all these, you got to read it, and you can't answer the question of, well, why don't you honor Shabbat? They can't answer it. They refuse. To, they <clears throat> change the subject back to Galatians, <laughs> back to Paul. They won't answer it. Well, you, nobody can keep the commandments. They're too hard. Name me one person who's kept them. Yahusha. I got that one right. There probably aren't, aren't there's, there, I would doubt that there's anyone else ever that's been able to keep the commandments because we can't control our heart. So we see here, whoever guards his word, truly the love of Elohim has been perfected in him, and by this we know that we are in him. The one who says he stays in him ought himself also walk, walk it out, even as he walked. Where was that one at? This is 1 John yeah. 2, 3 through um, 6. But they could go on and read uh, 7 because it tells you that we've got to go to the front of the book. Behold. <laughs> no. I got the love is. <laughs> Behold. Behold. Behold's a good one too. Are you sure you want me to read it? No. Beloved, I write no fresh command to you, but an old command which you have had from the beginning. The old command is the word which you heard from the beginning. What does John, John wrote this. What does John 1, 1 say? In the beginning was a word. The word was with Yahweh and the word was Yahweh. And in the beginning bear a sheet, there he is. Because what does y'all say? What, is, what does bear sheet 1 say? Genesis 1. Let's just go there and look at it. And my friend even said this. He said, y'all, it's plural. Well, yeah, that's because they're both there. Yeah. This is both of them. This is Yahu Yahusha and Yahuwah. Okay. In the beginning, Elohim, that's plural. That's two. The Elo Eloah would be uh, singular. Elohim is plural. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And then on over, I believe it's in two. Mm -hmm. in our image. Huh? In our image. Mm -hmm. Yes. See, where is it over here? It's 27. <laughs> no, 26? Yeah. 226? No, 126. Huh? 126. Oh, it's on 126. 126. Yeah, it's 126, yeah. I'm all over the place here. 126. And Elohim said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Who's the we? Who's the our? Us. It's him and, and Junior. Mm -hmm. It's Yahweh, 
and Yahweh Jr., Yahusha, the one who came in his name. Charles, if you do that, I'm going to fall asleep too. <laughs> I know, it's just such good food. Okay, so let's go back over here and let's just read that one more time. They profess to know Elohim, but in works, they deny him. So that means they are not walking as he walked. They're not doing as he did. Him being, that they are being abominable and disobedient and unfit for any good work. What do we know in Leviticus? What does Yah say about the food that we consume? Wait, excuse me. The non-food items that we consume. It makes you what? Abominable. And not like the snowman. Okay. I've got to sit far away from you because we're thinking too much alike. Okay. We are in two. And I uh, also wants to read 2 Corinthians 11. 13 through 15. Is anyone there already? Yes? Okay. For such are false in this, in, in this areas, deceptive workers, masquerading as the mysteries of Messiah. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as a messenger of light. Mm-hmm. False emissaries, guys. We're not doing the same thing that they did in Ephesus. They tested the emissaries. They tested the words they were teaching. They tested them for everything. You know what? We need to stop and pray. We should be praying first, mm -hmm. not as a, a second thought. Father, y'all, we just want you, um, Father, to bless us steady. Keep us awake, Abba. Keep us alert. Use us as uh, empty clay bowls just to fill us and let us pour out exactly what you want us to teach. Father, this is a deep study. It's an important study, and it's a picture of how we got to where we are today. So, Father, please, Abba, guide our words. Let everyone in here contribute because this is that important of a study. We just bless you. We thank you for Shabbat that we can come together and do exactly what we're doing. Let us love one another, support one another, and lift each other up. And Father, the hardest thing of all, if, if one falls, we all need to go to that person and help them. Not stomp on them or kick them. We're supposed to be there to help. So give us that kind of heart and that kind of love. And the, give us the eyes that you have that we can see one another as you see us and as you see others. In the precious name of Yahushua, we pray these things. Amen. Okay, thank you for doing that. And um, so so we see there. Read that one more time, Leanne. Which verse? Yes. Mm -hmm. For such are false emissaries, deceptive workers masquerading as emissaries of Messiah. No wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as a messenger of light. It is not surprising then if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness who then shall be according to the works. Okay, so if you're not doing the works of Yah, whose works are you doing? Hasatan. You're working for one or the other. You're following one or the other. You're on one side or the other. You cannot be, you cannot sit at the table with demons and the table with Yahweh at the same time. It doesn't work. You cannot serve two masters. Thank you so much, Val. You can't. What and I'm sorry. 11, 13 to 15, second Corinthians. Thank you, Chanel. Sorry. No, that was very good. He said, yet yeah, this you have, that you hate the works of the Nicolaites. The Nicolaites followed Nicholas, mm -hmm. who had been one of the seven leaders, I think, and he went off into left field. He was way off in left field. He uh, So the Nicolites, what they believed and did is anything that pleasures the flesh, lavish food, lavish drink, lavish sexual parties, whatever. Where are we today? We're, <laughs> we're there. And, and, and today, but today the Nicolites is acceptable. Back then it wasn't. And this is what uh, this is what Yahushua was saying to Ephesus. He said, You don't you hate their works. He's not saying he hates 
the Nicolette ladies, they hate their works. And there's a big difference there, guys. We don't hate the people who are doing sin. We hate the sin itself. And eventually it will take those doing the sin out because it will kill you. Because that's what the law says. Sin leads to death. It's uh, Romans 6, 23. Mm-hmm. The wages of sin is death. Well, and it's throughout the, the scripture. You, if you're going to eat things that are not food, it's going to kill you. If you're going, I mean, look at Deuteronomy. Uh, my favorite chapter, and we're going to be there pretty soon. Those are going to be long Shabbats. I'm just telling you right now. Get ready. <laughs> we're going to be studying hard. We're going to just bring your sleeping bags. Bring your sleeping bags and a, like a thermos. Okay, bring a woolly sleeping bag. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Okay, everybody else wants to come camping with us too. They're like, yeah, we will come. Um, so he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. To him who overcomes, I shall give to eat from the tree of life in the midst of the garden. Well, there it is. Look at Revelation. Look at Revelation twenty-two fourteen. Oh. <laughs> Valerie's like, no, don't uh -huh. don't go there already. I knew we would be there. Tonight. We are there. So this is that tree of life that Yah created, and that also let's see. There's a verse in Genesis. No, look look at uh, Genesis three twenty-two through twenty-four. Um, is anybody there? Val, read it. Uh, it's 3.22. Genesis 3.22. Oh, my stomach is full. And Yahweh Elohim said, See, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Keep going? No, that's it. Oh, okay. So, take from the tree of life and live forever. So, this is the tree of eternal life that's there in the garden. Yes, we get to eat from that tree. Okay, so he's saying since you know, since you've done this, and you're eating this way, or you've done this, now you have to eat of the tree of life in order to... Well, what he's saying is man has fallen. Okay. Man ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Well, right. then they, now we know good from evil. Before, we were innocent. We didn't know right from wrong. Now that we, they knew that and they had sinned because they broke the only commandment y'all gave them, it, they, would, <laughs> they would have lived forever mm -hmm. in that sinful state. Y'all had to, he had to allow for the full 6,000 years for his son to come. Wow. I like, Steve Berkson used to tell a story, story like this, and I like the way he did it, wow. and I don't know if he still tells it, but he, he said it's like this. He said, it's like Yah and Yah Jr. are sitting there, and Jr. says, Dad, I want us to make human beings. I want them to be our friends and commune with us, and I, I want us to have a relationship with them. And Dad said, look, we're going to do it, but you know they're going to fall, and when they do, they're yours, son. You're going to have to take care of them, and you're going to have to pay for their sin because they're yours. <laughs> This, this is what the New Testament says. Those that my Father has given me. So I really like the way. Hello? Oh, that's him. That's the him. I like the way Steve Berkson puts it because it makes a beautiful picture of what I, I believe really did happen. Because if they had eat, if, if for, before we can eat from the tree of life and live eternally, we've got to be walking the walk. That's the only way we get into the kingdom and listen to this. 22.14. Are y'all ready? In Revelation. Revelation 22.14. Everybody in here has got it memorized. They're not even turning there. Blessed are those doing. <laughs> doing is an action word as well as belief. But doing is really like working. Doing his commands so that the authority shall be theirs into the tree of life. So those who are obedient get to eat from that tree of life. And it gives them eternal life. And to enter through the gates into the city. That's one of those oh, moments. To enter through the gates of the city, you've got to be doing his commands. You're not getting in the city without them. Okay? 
So you're, you're not getting in the city and you're not going to eat from that beautiful tree of life in the midst of paradise unless you're obedient. So this is what he's telling to the assembly of Ephesus. And the Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, was written to the city and to this assembly, guys. And it was a very corrupt city. They had idols everywhere. It was a very corrupt city. So this church age was from, when did I tell you? 30 to 70 AD. 30 to 70 AD. What happened in 70 AD? The temple was demolished. Rome completely tore the temple down. Okay. Now then, let's go to Smyrna. We're in verse 8. Smyrna is known as the Assembly of Persecution. And it goes from 70 AD all the way to 313. And it is very, very interesting. I'm hoping I don't leave anything out. Okay. And to the messenger of the assembly in Smyrna, right? This says the first and the last. Well, if you look at Revelation 22, 14, and look at the, the verse before it, it says, I am the Aleph and the Toph, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Thank you, Leanne. So he's, he's telling you right now, this is him over here. Thus, this says the first and the last who became dead and came to life. And so we know that. That's part of our testimony, right? What happened in 313? What's that? Constantine. Constantine. Constantine actually came about in 303. So um, Constantine brought about the end of the, the period of persecution, but from 70 all the way up to 303, this was a horrible time. A horrible time for the walkers of the way. And I'm not going to call them Christians because that's not what they were. They were those who walked the way, the path, the way that Yahusha walked. They didn't walk the Christian path. They didn't even think the way the Christians think today. Not even anywhere close, okay? Yeah, they don't have a path, do they? They've got the aisle down to the front of the church, and that's the only path they walk. And then they walk back and they sit down, and they wait for the end. I like that. Huh. You're going to be a teacher one day. Okay. It already is. So soon. Yeah. Hmm. We're proud of our kids here. We only have two. <laughs> that's all right. I know your works in pressure and poverty. So this is a church that is very much in poverty. They're poor, famine. This is them. Yet you're rich. How can you be poor, hungry, yet rich? Because they still have that first love. Because they still have that first love with Yahusha. Yet you are rich in the blasphemy of those who say they are Yahudim and are not, but are a congregation of Satan. Listen, there were many who, who were claiming to be Jews. They weren't. They weren't even following the Torah, much less the Talmud. The Talmud being that which the Pharisees came up with. The Talmud is um, not what we follow. We follow the Torah. The Torah is light and simple. The Talmud is where the Pharisees and basically the Jews, they added to it. That's exactly right, Grant. What were they doing? Pharisees. Pharisees and something else. Sadducees. Sadducees. Yes. They didn't actually get rid of the word. It was still in existence, but they added to. And and they did. They built fences around it. But the, the number of the books and the pages of the Talmud, what they did, Grant, on the Talmud is they, they came up with laws to help you keep the laws. So there might be a hundred laws to help you keep the law. Yes, sir. And that what Christians do today with theology? Yeah. Well, okay. Christians today take from the word. 
Because you could, if you're a Christian today, you could take the front porch, this side, you could tear it off and throw it in the trash, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter one iota. It's not going to matter to them. What the Salmons call it, a uh, sli uh, sliver. The sli yeah, they, they go by the sliver, and we call this side the chunk. <laughs> but um, I lost my train of thought there. We're talking about. She looked over and held it. Okay, but but the Yahudim, the, the, the Yahudim came up with the Talmud. This would be a silly afternoon. Came up with the Talmud. So, but but these people were saying we're Yahudim. They were wanting the prestige. They were wanting authority. They were wanting power. But they were just a congregation of Satan. So they were not under the covenant. Not even the covenant that the, the Jews came up with on the Talmud. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. See, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison in order to try you, and you shall have pressure for ten days. Be trustworthy until death, and I shall give you the crown of life. This is more than likely talking about Polycarp, which was the bishop of Smyrna at this time. And it's pretty interesting. It's said that Polycarp was actually in prison for 10 days before they killed him, before he was martyred. Mm -hmm. So this 10 days can also read in the fact that during this course of period from 70 A.D. through 313 A.D., there were 10 tribulations, 10 rulers over each period that was known to be just, I mean, guys, listen, the way they tortured the the walkers of the path, the walkers of the way, the keepers of the Torah were vicious. They were cruel. They burnt, well, Nero made street lights out of the Christians and burned them. Him? Roman candles. It was, uh, yeah, they were, they were probably Jewish, they were Jewish candles. For the Romans, yes, they were. Oh, I see what you're saying. They were Roman candles. That's a power. Yeah. A Roman candle. <laughs> okay. Remember when we watched Apostle Paul? Yeah, it is. The the movie we went and watched that. That's was the first time I saw it. Yeah. It's, it's horrible. Yeah. It's hard. What they would do? They would impale them and set them on fire, and, and use them as lights. Nero used them in his garden to light his his pathways. That's sick. But first that's of all, what, they already said that. That's that, they said that was going to happen. Description. Uh -huh. We are going to be persecuted. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not that way. Yeah, I, I'm not saying that. It's, mm -hmm. it's like it now. Well, this was, this was a very, very, this was a bad period. And this is why Smyrna is called the, the, the period of persecution, the church persecution. But they were very poor. They suffered a lot. Um. Y'all do know that every single one of the apostles were martyred, mm -hmm. except for John. John was tortured several times, but he wasn't killed. So, in fact, when he, he, left, when he left the, the Isle of, of Patmos, he went back to Ephesus. Mm -hmm. So, um, but what does pers persecution cause? When you're under persecution. Does that mean like that you're walking a walk? That you're being persecuted, they were being persecuted because they were walking the walk, they sure were. But what what, what does it cost you to do? Turn it, turn to you. That's cheap. That's what it's going to do if you're really on the path. Yes. If you're genuine, to look, mm -hmm. yes. well, look how many people died mm -hmm. after Yahushua's risen. After he was risen, what was there 500 that were martyred right then and there? They gave their life because they knew. They knew that he had been risen from the dead. And they knew it as a fact. It wasn't rumor. Who's going to give up their life for a rumor? Right? They knew this as a fact. They martyred themselves. That's the same way. If, you're, if, if you fall under persecution, it's going to do one of two things. You're either going to run away scared and turn your back on y'all. Or you will face it, and you will face it with great strength. And it will make you stronger than you've ever been. And that's what I pray every one of us in this room can do. Because I tell you, it, it would be very difficult, especially, you know, 
with uh, family, it would be very difficult. Okay? Oh, yeah. You know, when the Assyrians in Syria, we, we, it, it's the churches over there in the Middle East, and I think it is Assyria, when they were being persecuted and their heads chopped off and the children split open, y'all know what I'm talking about. It's been, what, six years ago? Mm -hmm. When, when the persecution was going on. But, I mean, they were going into people's houses and taking their children. And, and this is what they were telling them. If you don't bow down to our God, we're going to hurt your child. And they did very gruesome things to the kids. And the kids died praising Yah. Little children with that kind of knowledge and belief and faith. That's where we need to be. And a lot of us are not there. We're not there. We we return and, and run. So a reporter went to this particular area. I wish I could recall the, the exact name because they brought great honor to the kingdom. But a reporter went to this area and she thought she was going to find weeping and wailing and crying and cursing, shaking their fist at God. No. What she found were men who were weeping because they weren't chosen. They felt like they weren't found worthy enough. So, guys, can we stand that kind of persecution? I pray that we can. And this is what we've got to be built up for. Well, the things in our life that are happening now, we shouldn't, we should count it all joy because the things that happen to us should be strengthening us. Yes, I got through this and then I'm going to be able to go on. That's the key to it. It's an everyday thing in our lives that we shouldn't We shouldn't just say, oh man, he, I, I can't do this. Well, we've got to go to the scriptures, you know, and he's got to give us the strength to do it. Anything's possible. Right? All things are possible with him, but we've got to have the stamina to do it, and that's what he, I think that's what he's trying to do this day and time is to uh, strengthen us and and encourage us and tell us, yes, you know, you got to make it. Guys, when there's no rapture and we go into the tribulation, oh, man. what do you think is going to happen to the majority of the churches? They're going to turn. You want to talk about a great falling away, and that's what the word says? Mm -hmm. There will be a great falling away? There will be a great falling away because people are not going to understand why are we in tribulation, why are we being persecuted? And we were told that we were going to be raptured out of here. Well, who were we told by? Well, but, but that's the whole point. They were lied to. And they weren't prepared. But they, they listened to the lies. And that's what happened. But they that's what... To... Seth, what, is, what do they want? Ears. They want their, their ears, ears to be tickled. Ears. They, they just that's want their ears to be tickled because that's what makes them feel good. Right. That's not what's going to get them into the kingdom. Right. It's going to be what leaves them outside the gate, isn't it? When and that's the rapture, it's going to be like, what? What, what were we told? And they're going to start, they're going to start right. believing. They're going to be like, is, is Jesus even real? That's right. They're going to doubt the whole word. Yeah. They will doubt the whole word. Then. I got to work the other day, and on the counter right there, there was, there was a little pamphlet that said, don't be left behind. I looked at the girl that was working there. I said, that's a lie. And I just kept on working. Listen, what you, <laughs> what, what, what you should have said is, you better want to be left behind mm -hmm. because those that are plucked up and cast into the fire, that is a rapture in a yeah. way. They're going to be plucked up and just tossed into the fire. Mm -hmm. Bye. We will be the left behind ones. Please, y'all. <laughs> did did y'all ever have like a, um, I remember being young and thinking there's no way this is real. Oh, yeah, I had that all the time. Like, I was, you know, not this, but the what I was learning, what I was kind of, when I would go to oh, church no. with my friends, oh, yeah. I was, I was like, so I can just, I just, it didn't make sense to me, even at like oh. 12 or 13, I was like, this doesn't seem right. It seems too good to be true. Maybe I just had that. No, I think we all did that because I walked away from the church at 14 because I was asking questions that they couldn't answer. Yes. Because I was reading the scripture and I was like, well, what about this? You just have to believe. Yeah. Okay, well, who's, I remember saying, who are this, who's this us that God is, and at the time it was God, who's this us God's talking about, we're going to make them in our image, who is this us? 
Well, we don't know. Well, we, there are some things we won't know until we, we get, get to heaven. Yes. Some questions you I was ask. like, you don't even know what you're teaching. Yep. Once saved, always saved, so I can just do whatever I want. That's what I thought at that age. Well, it doesn't make it, it didn't make sense to me. Because well, it's not have, true. Yeah. Well, then they have all the, like, if you sin, you're not saved. Like, so, when I was at a Christian church, uh -huh. they said, if you're, if you're, you're saved if you believe in them, but you're not going to be for. I, I don't really remember that much, but. You were young. Yeah. As long as you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you're saved. Like, that was what I thought. I'm going to be different. My whole world's going to change, and it never changed. And, and that's what so many people say is that they're, they're like. The whole world's going to change for you when you make this decision. Yes. And people make the decision and they're like, um, where's the change? The definition of belief that you were told or had was not the correct one. Mm -hmm. I just we do how they what we wanted to hear. And I thought this was going to be a short, <laughs> a short study. Okay. I. <laughs> We're verse three. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We're almost to the third church. <laughs> okay. And with with all of the persecution that was going on in 303 AD, Constantine came out with the Edict of Milan, which basically put a stop to the persecution. But what was happening is they were beginning to nationalize religion. Okay, it was becoming nationalized. They were coming up with a whole new set of rules. So all of a sudden, they changed. What What did Daniel tell us? Oh, let's look at that. Is it the Daniel seven? Away with. I think it's Daniel seven. Okay, here we go. It's Daniel 7, verse, I'm going to start at 24. And the ten horns are ten sovereigns from the rain. They shall rise, and another shall rise after them. And it is different from the first ones, and it humbles three sovereigns. And it speaks words against the Most High. Who speaks against the Most High? Satan. Satan, the enemy, the Antichrist. And it wears out the set-apart ones of the Most High. And it intends, excuse me, it intends to change appointed times, which are the appointed moedim, or the dress rehearsals, and the law, which they got rid of, and they are given into the hands, hands for a time and times and time and a half. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away its rule. So guys, listen, <clears throat> Constantine changed. He took away the Hebrew calendar. And for a lot of you live streamers, you may not realize this, but the, the month of December in Spanish, it's what, Deciembre? It means 10. Why is the 12th month represented by the number 10? What is Noviembre? Do we have any? Huh? Uh, nine. Nine, that's right. So Noviembre is nine. October? Eight. Eight, like an octagon. And you can keep on going down, but guys, the first of the year was not January. The first of the year was when? The, the spring equinox. So the end of March, April, around in that area is when the first of the year occurred. And so they changed the times. They got rid of the, the Hebrew calendar. Listen, without a calendar, you can't keep the festivals. Okay? I tried. I didn't know there was a Hebrew calendar. I tried keeping festivals when I first started studying, and this was so many years ago, I can't tell you. But I was trying to keep the festivals, but it didn't line up with scripture. It was so out of whack, it wasn't even funny. Um, so I was trying to do it on the secular calendar. Won't work. Okay, trust me, won't work. But um, so this is what the enemy did. He, he stole all of this away. The enemy also came up, okay, so, so this is part of all the changes that Constantine brought about. He changed the Sabbath to what day? Sunday. Why was it called Sunday? Sunday. 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 
to the day that the sun god was worshipped. The venerable day of the sun god is what Sunday was. So he said, no longer will there be a worship on Saturday. It will be moved to Sunday. If you were caught worshiping on Shabbat, you were removed from the church, which basically means you were killed. Yes, God. He hated the Jews. He did hate the Jews. He, he says he was saved, but he was not saved. He wasn't even baptized up until his, his deathbed. But he so, was trying to negate everything that they stood for. He, he, he did get rid of everything that they stood for. He um, he made it. I think he made it illegal to uh, have the Torah. Listen, the Catholic Church wrote the Bible in Latin. Why would they do that? Because that was in Latin. Change words. No, it wasn't. What? Huh? Was it? Change words. They 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 did it so only the priests could read it. Oh. The the common people could not read Latin. They couldn't. So, what so they, could, they didn't. Power. Okay. Listen, but, if you can't read okay. scripture, how are you going to check for accuracy? How you're, are you going to check for the truth? You're you ask, can't. You're going to ask them. You know it. Back then, they wanted to check scripture. They wanted to check for accuracy. Today, nobody wants to read scripture. Okay. It's, it, not even at, uh, it's not even appropriate anymore. Was it translated from Greek and Hebrew to Latin? They, they took it from Hebrew into Latin. Okay. So there was a lot of mistranslation there, even. Well, okay, just by them changing, they, they changed the commandments. Do you still have the, the list of the Catholic commandments? Yeah. I, I, I knew Seth would have them. So they have their own commandments, and guess what's not there? The second one. Yeah, the one about idolatry. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, we worship all kinds of things. Listen, we're going to see in a little bit. Oh, no, Mother Mary. Mother Mary. Mother Mary. Mother Mary. Yes, Mother Mary. The saints? Mother Nature. Pray to different saints? No, Mother Nature isn't there. It's Mother Mary. It's Mother Mary. Oh. Um, and Peter? Mary. Yeah, wait, come, come up here. I want you to come sit back by me. Come sit by me. And people don't realize this. They just say, oh, it's real. They worship their, their priests almost. They go to him for the covering of their sins. They can't go straight to Yah yeah. to, for, for repentance. They have to go through the priest. Yeah. And you have to sit behind a little veil. Yeah. Okay. Seth, would you read the, the Ten Commandments of the Catholic Church? It says, uh, this is the Ten Commandments in Catholic theology. <coughs> I, am the, I am the Lord thy God, number one. No other little G God before me no graven images or likeliness. Not take the Lord's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day. That's all. Just remember. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill, and thou shalt not commit adultery. <coughs> I think I'm missing one. I thought they just said nine. Well, no gra graven images is not in there. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You should not covet. Okay, but um, I thought they taken out. I thought they took out the graven image one, and they replaced it with a different one, which basically meant the same thing as covet. What does covet mean? Um, want something that's not yours. Like I want her bracelet. I really want her bracelet. Huh? Is that the current? They said, yeah, I think. I don't know. Well, I thought we saw one that took out. So the Ten Commandments of the Catholic. There's only nine here. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember this. Let's look at this. Let's do. Let's do look for sure. For sure. For sure. You need a new scripture. Huh? You need a new scripture. <laughs> How dare you? I'm sorry. Sorry, live streamers. Could somebody that's really sweet bring me a glass of ice water? <laughs> Would you? Thank you so much, Teddy. I am the Lord thy God. No other. Okay, here we go. Well, I think these are some ones. I, I am the Lord thy God, no other gods before me, no graven images or likenesses, 
not take the Lord's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day, honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill, and that, that thy shalt, thou shalt not commit adultery. One, two, three, There's four, eight. five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Remember the Sabbath day, but don't keep it holy. <laughs> Oh, here it is. Here's here it is. Here's here's a real thing. Okay, I am the Lord thy God. Thou, thou shalt not have any strange gods before me. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember to keep the holy the Sabbath day. Honor your father and the mother. Uh, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh oh. Thou shalt not steal. Sorry, guys, we're live streaming right now, and we do not take, well, I don't take messenger calls anyway. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. So there's two on coveting, and that's it. You, how'd you get it up? Um, it's in dummies.com. <laughs> 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 well, dummy found it. Um, so, so guys, listen, what, what have they put throughout all their churches and even on the outside of their monasteries? Idols. Are there idols, life-size idols of patron Saint Peter, patron Saint, uh, Patrick, Patrick, patron Saint Lucas, mm -hmm. I don't know, <laughs> Name. They've got them everywhere, and then Mother Mary is right front. She's huge. She's big, and Yeshua on the cross. So, um, so they have completely changed everything. And what they have have said to the world is that the 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 Church of uh, the Roman Catholic Church has the power and has the authority above Yah to ch make changes to. The, the the commandments. Teddy, you just won big old huge. You used to win. <laughs> win. <laughs> Ooh, I was thirsty. Sorry about that. Okay. I feel like I had one of those. <laughs> political room moments here. Are we on the We are. Okay, so Polycarp was the first one martyred. So in 67, we had Nero. He was in command. He was in charge. He, was, he had authority. In 81, there was Domitian, 108, Trajan. 162 was Marcus Aurelius Antonio. 192 was Cerulius. 235 was Maximus. 294, uh, Dacius. 257 Valerian, 274 Aurelian, and 303 was Diocletian. Ten specific heads, which they say could be closely related to the ten days of pressure. So every one of these were torturers. Um, what, Valerie? Nothing, I just thought of something. Okay. I don't know. Just wait. Don't, 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 when tribulation draws you closer, when when persecution draws you closer to Yah, Satan's been trying to do away with with the walkers of the way. Did it work? It didn't work because it made them draw nearer to him. No, that's okay. You're talking about the ten heads? It talks about in Daniel when we just were in seven. Uh and the ten, the ten horns that were on his head. And of the other horn that came up. So you've got the ten. I mean, that's amazing. And then, so, so Constantine, when part of those ten, he may be the one that came up after. Uh -huh. You know, guys, write that down, Valerie, because you have to this here. Here, write that on your hand. We're going to put paper somewhere. Put it on your right. What you just said. Well, I just read it. I know, but... It's Daniel 7, 20. Daniel 7, 20. About the 10. There's got to be some correlation there. 
Yep, I think you're right. So where, where I'm going with this is Satan was trying to do away with the Jews, right? He was yep. trying to get rid of the people. He was trying to get rid of the way. He's always and it, and it didn't work. Okay, it did not work. He thought if he killed Yahushua, that was the end. And then it's been on and on with the Jewish mm -hmm. people. I mean, Hitler, I mean, it's always been there. Okay, Spain. so so he's always trying to uh -huh. do away with us. With us. <laughs> yeah, he'll try to do that. So it didn't work. So now we're going into the compromising church. We're going to let you live, but we're going to water everything down. So we go to Pergamos. Okay, are y'all ready? Well, let me finish reading about Smyrna. Um, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. He who overcomes shall by no means be harmed by the second death, which we already know, right? Okay, and to the messenger, we're in verse 12, to the messenger of the assembly, Pergamos, right. So Pergamos, their time period is from 313 A.D. through 500 A.D. This is the time of compromise. Okay, when you do away with the laws, when you, do, when you change the word, when you put the word in a language that nobody can read but the priest, what are you doing? <laughs> You're taking control of what the people are learning. You are so going to pay for this. <laughs> they're, they're basically putting you to, the people that are following you are putting you to the priest's hands instead of the... Hi, Gordon. It's so good to see you. I'm sorry, go ahead, Grant. Uh, the, the people that are basically following that is basically... Putting their lives into the priest's hands. That's it. They're trusting someone else to tell them what y'all saying. And these people have already changed everything about y'all's rules. So absolutely right. Okay, so y'all want to read about Pergamos? Y'all ready? Yep. <sighs> he who has a sharp two-edged sword says this. What is that sharp two-edged sword? The word. The word of Yah. It's in Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4.12. I'm going that right here. Uh, the, well, I could, used to could say it. What, the, is it two-edged sword piercing his bones and marks of it? Let me look it up. Maybe. Well, okay. your man comes and you leave. <sighs> He's coming. You're supposed to come to stay. Bye. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> you <made me> <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. Okay. So, okay. Uh, Hebrews four twelve says, "For the word of Elohim is living and working and sharper than any two edged sword, cutting through even to the dividing of being and spirit and of joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart." Mm. Yeah. Now that is scary because. He's judging the thoughts and intention of the heart, and here he is dealing with the compromising church. So they last from 313 A.D. to 500 A.D. This is Pergamos, and again, we are still in the, the nation of Turkey. <clears throat> I know your works and where you dwell, where the throne of Satan is. What's ironic here is Constantine had a temple, and it was called Pergamos. It was called the throne of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was called. Listen, guys, he was pagan. Constantine was pagan. Everything he did shows that he was pagan. By doing away with the word, he was pagan. He was pagan. Well, yeah. He created his own nationalized religion, and it is what is ruling today. Listen, it's ruling the Christian churches today, because when do they worship? Sunday. Sunday. And they're trying to say it's called the Lord's Day. And there's somewhere in Acts said, well, you know, they worship something. And that's a way they clarify that what they're doing is on Sunday. Bailey, can you reveal? I'll, I'll leave a big tip, okay, for you and Teddy. I tip big. So, what, five cents? Ten? <laughs> shekel. Shekel. Oh, leave shekel. a shekel. A light shekel or a heavy shekel. Okay, Valerie, I'm sorry. Well, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, no, no, oh the no. Lord's Day. I mean, yes. I questioned 
sometime about it, about uh, Shabbat. And I was told that in Acts it talks about the Lord's Day, and it was on Sunday. And that's how they try to clarify it. So, so the word says, do not change, do not take away, do not add to the words of this book. Thank you, Angel. Come around here. Oh, this is my Bailey. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Angel. Wow. Here's your tip. That's not your tip. I'll take care of you later, girl. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so um, here we go into compromise. I know your works. Mm -hmm. I know where you dwell, where the throne of Satan is, and you hold fast to my name and did not deny the belief in me, even in the days which Antipas, which was my trustworthy witness, who was killed near you, where Satan dwells. Okay, Antipas, Antipas, let me pull him up here. Okay, so the traditional account goes on to say that Antipas was martyred during the reign of Nero in 68. So he was one of the first to be martyred during the Pegasus, the Pergama, excuse me, Pergamus uh, assembly reign. But he was burned in a brazen bull-shaped altar for casting out demons worshipped by the local population. Okay, he was casting out demons... And for that, he was burned. On the calendars of Eastern Christianity, the Feast of Antipas is April the 11th. So he, what, what John says here, he said, he said, Antipas, even in the days in which Antipas was my trustworthy witness. So he was a witness for, for Yahweh. He was casting out demons in the local area. And he was killed by them. He was cooked to death in a, a dry brass it pot. It says near you where Satan dwells. Is that going to be the what you throne said? of Satan? The throne of Satan. Mm -hmm. That's what he named uh, Constantine. That's what they named the temple wow. that Constantine had. Behold, I hold a few matters against you. I mean, a few matters besides you. <laughs> okay. What else? Um, you have there those who adhere to the teachings of Balaam who taught the lock to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat, and this is food in italics, offered to idols and to commit whoring. Now, y'all all remember what happened when Israel reached the border of uh, the Promised Land. Mm -hmm. Go to Numbers 25. And Valerie, do you have uh, your... Seifer? Yes. Would you go to um, Yasher 8551? So Numbers 25. Okay. Now, Balak he called Balaam, and y'all know who Balaam is. He's the same one that was present in the days of Mitzrayim when Pharaoh was there. Yep. He's also the one that had overtaken Cush. When Moshe took it back, Kush, Kush. Um, so Balaam has been around for a very long time. Balak called for Balaam to curse Israel. Right. And when he got there, he couldn't curse him. Well, pay him. They, they were going to pay him big money, but he's like, I can't, they can't be cursed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Israel dwelt in Shittim, and the people began to whore with the daughters of Moab. And they invited the people to the slaughterings of their mighty ones, and the people ate and bowed down to their mighty ones. Thus Israel was joined to Baal Peor, and the displeasure of Yahweh burned against Israel. Now, <clears throat> Moab is Moab, which is who? Who was Moab? It was the son, the Lo, uh, Lot's grandson. It was Lot's son. Son. Which really... If it had no, been a right. different it daddy, right. it would have been his grandson. Right. But unfortunately, he fathered his daughter's children. Right. So right. he had Moab and Ammon. Ammon and Moab. Huh? He had Cush. Okay, so 
Listen, when Balaam could not and would not curse Israel, what he did was he told Balak, he said, this is the way you entice the children to sin against Yah, is you're going to entice them with food, you're going to entice them with drink, and with beautiful women. Lure them into your tents and get their mind off of what Yah is doing. And that's exactly what they did. And it brought about... Yeah, sure. 85 what? Uh, 85, 51. Uh, okay, 8551 says, And the children of Israel journeyed from the plain of Moab, Moab and pitched by the Jordan from Beit Hashishmoth, even unto Abel Shedem at the end of the plains of Moab. And when the children of Israel abode in the plain of Shedem, they began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And the children of Israel approached Moab, and the children of Moab pitched their tents opposite to the camp of the children of Israel. And the children of Moab were afraid of the children of Israel. And the children of Moab took all their daughters and their women of beautiful aspect and comely appearance and dressed them in gold and silver and costly garments. And the children of Moab seated these, those women at the door of their tents in order that the children of Israel might see them and turn to them and not fight against Moab. And all of the children of Moab did this thing to the children of Israel. And every man placed his woman and daughter at the door of the tent. And all the children of Israel saw the act of the children of Moab. And the children of Israel turned to the daughters of Moab and coveted them. And they went to them. Okay, so this is what Yah is saying in verse 14 of Revelation 2. He says, I hold a few matters against you. You have those who adhere to the teachings of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat, really, th stuff. It's probably blood. It could be food. Non it could food. be non-food. That's right. It could be scorpions and lizards and pig. And oh, my. <laughs> scorpions, lizards, and pigs. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, so it could be all that in oh, my. And so <clears throat> they were doing all that, plus they were committing whoring. So the pagan worship fe festivals were awful, guys. And that's what they were doing here. And they were offering things up to idols, which means they had idols in their altar rooms. So you also have those who adhere to the teaching of the Nicolaites, which, te who's, which teaching I hate. And again, this is the same leader of Nicholas who taught them debauchery, the art of sexual immorality, uh, lust of foods and, and strong drink. This was what they were all about, and that's all putting it very cleanly. So that plus the Balaam, guys, they had a lot of problems. Repent or else I shall come to you speedily and fight against them with the sword in my mouth. Mm. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. <laughs> to him who overcomes, I shall give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I shall give him a white stone, and on the stone a renewed name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. You know, that almost sounds like uh, the, the um, Urim and the... Mm -hmm. huh? Well, you can code. the I know what you mean. The the That's it. Tumen and Urim. We have had brain, go to sleep, huh? The unum and the tunum. Okay, so one of those was a white stone, one was black. It almost sounds like one of those, doesn't it? On the messenger of the assembly of top. Oh, Okay, so he's going to give you a new name if you overcome. So that ended in 500 A.D. The Church of Tyria lasted from 500 A.D. to 1500. And the messenger of the assembly in Tyria write, This says the son of Elohim, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like burnished bronze. And, guys, that's a direct uh, copy from what Daniel 10.5 says. I know your works and love 
and service and belief and your endurance and as for your works the last are more than the first so when they began they weren't doing quite as much as they are now but i hold against you this that you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess to teach and lead my servants astray to commit whoring and to eat stuff offered to idols and i gave her time to repent of her whoring and she did not repent see i am throwing her into a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her into great affliction unless they repent of their works and i shall slay her children with death <clears throat> And all the assembly shall know that I am the one searching the kidneys and hearts, and I shall give to each one of you according to your works. That's scary. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to you I say, and to the rest in, in Thyatira, as many as do not possess his teaching and who have not known the depths of Satan, as they call them, I am not putting on you another burden. But hold fast what you have until I come. And he who overcomes and guards my works until the end, to him I shall give authority over the nations. And he shall shepherd them with a rod of iron, as the potter's vessel shall be broken to pieces. Wow. As I also have received from my father. And I shall give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. Okay, so the... the church period from 500 to 1500 is called the age of darkness it's the dark age of the the church because they went really astray and guess who was leading them during this time the the catholic church mm -hmm. the roman catholic church and she is this jezebel yes the Roman Catholic Church is this Jezebel. She calls herself a prophetess to teach, and she leads his servants astray. Imitation yep. of the bride of Yahoo. That's right. So she has led the whole world astray, guys. Every church, every church worships on what day? Sunday. Masquerading as light. Mm hmm In a dark age. <laughs> I gave her time to repent. So he gave, you know, there was a time that the Catholic Church fell. It did? Yes. And it was only down for like two or three years and then it came back with a, like a strong rebound. I need to look at the, the years. Well, see, all this is what I was going to look up uh, last night and I had no internet at all. So, I apologize, but we're doing the study anyway. <clears throat> so, he gave her time to repent of her horror, and she did not repent. See, I am throwing her into a sick bed. And listen to this. And those who commit adultery with her into great affliction, unless they repent of their works. And I shall slay her children with death. Okay, well, if you're slaying someone, you're killing them anyway, right? Mm -hmm. But you're going to slay them with death? This is what's interesting. And this comes from um the 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 scriptures was uh, put out by unfolding the lies and i don't know the gentleman's name but he actually came up with this what do you have valerie uh the church it was from 1378 to 1417. this is the time period that he gave the church to repent guys three men simultaneously claimed to be the true pope mm -hmm. uh, driven by politics rather than theological disagreement. The schism was ended by the Council of Constance. 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 1414 to 1419. So this was that, that time period where she mm -hmm. was given the chance to repent. She didn't repent. She came back full force. But he said, I'm throwing her into a sick bed. The Black Death, the Black Plague hit, and it specifically hit where? I don't know. I'll ask it. Okay. <laughs> this is a monster that y'all created with me. Huh? What did you ask? The Black Plague. The Black Death. Hit in Europe. It hit in Europe. Did it hit specifically in Rome? It was sure? a... sure? The Black Death was a bubonic plague mm -hmm. occurring in Afro-Europe from 1346 to 1353. It's the most fatal pandemic 
recorded in human history causing the death of 75 to 200 million people. That's a pandemic, guys. What we just had was not a pandemic. Okay, so does it say uh, where it struck mostly? It said in um, Eurasia and North Africa. Okay, well, and most of Europe is where the Catholic Church had spread yeah, to. Yeah, it said location, Asia, North Africa, <coughs> Caucasus, and Europe. So guys, listen, during that church period, it's when this Black Death hit. And so he killed her children with death, the Black Death which is why I think there's a play on words here. But everyone went into the sick bed. Those who went in the sick bed didn't come out. You, if you got sick with this, you died. Um, so the assembly- said most people died. Huh? Said most people died yeah. in the first place. Yep. And all the assembly shall know that I am the one searching the kidneys and the hearts and I shall give to each one according to your works. Listen, if you're doing any of the works of the Catholic Church, that's what you're gonna get. And when do you get it? <laughs> I'm not talking to you, Charles. Because <laughs> you're not going to answer. When do you... Hmm? Are you, are you in uh, 23? Mm hmm Talking about the, the search, the kidneys and the hearts. Yes. The kidneys is a filter. It is. And the heart, we've got to have a pure heart. Mm hmm heart's Really, the heart. heart's a filter, too. It's filtering the blood through the yes. heart and back out to the body. <clears throat> gotta be so pure. It's got to be oxygenated and cleaned, and the kidney does the same thing. So, so he's, he's searching both, both of your of purifying them. systems in your body. So listen, if you if your if your kidneys aren't working, you have to have what? Dialysis. I mean, Nobody. Okay. Nobody's brain is. <laughs> if your kidney's not working, you gotta have your leg cut off. No. <laughs> oh. No. Sorry, no. <laughs> Who needs your leg? <laughs> okay. So, so y'all is searching all of this. But guys, okay. And I say to you and to the rest of, of Thyatira, as many as do not possess this teaching. And he's talking about the teachings from the messenger or the angel of light. Um, don't have these teachings from the Catholic Church. That's the main thing he's talking about. As many of as do not possess this teaching, which we would be the teaching of the Catholic Church, and who have not known the depths of Satan, as they call them, I am not putting you under another burden. So if you're not already following this belief system, he's not going to put you under another burden, but he said, hold fast what you have until I come. This was the darkest age of the, the church period. Dark, dark, dark. And he who overcomes and guards my works until the end to him I shall give authority over the nations and he shall shepherd them with a rod of iron. Who comes with a rod of iron? Yahusha. Okay. That's the end of chapter two. Yeah. We're probably all, I mean, have to deal with the seven uh, spirits of the churches in our lives that we have to get out, you know, get rid of something in each one of them. We're in that last age church right now. We're mm -hmm. the last of Hmm? You're right. We're the last of Yeah, we are. It is. You are definitely the last of a lot of things. Huh? <laughs> 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 what? Oh my! <laughs> I couldn't even tell what he had wrapped around his ears. So, so guys, anybody have any questions? Wow, good. It should have been better because we should have had all the. Well, Thank yeah. goodness you were there answering oh, questions for me. I know how to get into that now. How'd you do that? I don't know. Somebody showed it to me one time and I can do it now. She can Google. I can Google. So Google and find that verse that I'm needing. I tried every which way. There's one word that I'm not... You're always going to give it to one of us at some point. When, when we get it, y'all call me. I'm going to be searching for it over and over. So, 
It's going to have one word that is identified. But I'll yeah, it. and I've tried every word I can yeah. think of. Hey, that little one. Oh, you know what we could do? We what? could watch some of your live streams. Oh, it's so boring. It's <laughs> not boring. It had to be in the last few weeks. Though. Yeah, it did because that's when we came up hard. with it. Because I was like, oh my goodness, look at this. <laughs> okay. You didn't write it down? Maybe Maybe not. No, because I was teaching. And, oh, I mean, that's why I oh, kneel. I'm like, oh, 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 I'm okay. writing that one down. I'm writing that one down. So, um, live streamers, we want to thank you all for coming and joining us and um, putting up with our silliness and our tiredness. I think we're all tired. This, this has been a doozy of a week for us. Yes. For y'all too? Yes. Oh, my goodness. I, I think that, that we're just getting into the norm. What do you think, Seth? Yeah. I think the norm is going to be doozies of a week, every week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guys, anybody want to comment? No? Okay. I think you've done a great job. <sighs> Is that why you were plugged in back there? No. Thank you for the water, Teddy. And <laughs> Bailey. Look, I drank nearly all of that. I put way too much salt in my food. I was like... <sighs> okay, so guys, next week we come back, we will do... Um, our study next week will start in Numbers 19. Woo! It's going to be another one of our next. Oh, 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 oh. You know what we hit next week? What? The Ashes of the Red Heifer. Oh, yes. Do you want to see my notes on the Ashes of the Red Heifer? <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> Look. Oh, uh, yes. These are all on the Ashes of the Red Heifer. So, the ashes of the red heifer have always been one of those things of what, why, how. And so, it's it's always intrigued, intrigued me. And so, I love the, the I know they're one of my favorite Torah portions. So, um, they got a red heifer that has no. They say they. It don't matter if they do or they don't. Because they don't have anyone who is capable of utilizing it. I think you lose that red heifer. I think he, he is going to sprinkle us all with the water of the ashes of the red heifer and cleanse us because we're going to be dunked in that river of living water that he wouldn't let Adam and Eve jump in because if you jump in there, you're completely purified of all your sins. I want to go in there. I want to erase everything. Don't y'all? A redo. That would be the ultimate redo. We get to redo and then live in it for eternity. I'm ready. I'm re are y'all ready? Yes. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I'm trying to join. So, listen, guys. We love you. Valerie, would you pray us out? You're so awesome. Father, we just in the precious name of Yahushua. That name that is just so sweet to our ears and is above all other names. And as we come to you today, we thank you and praise you for another Shabbat, being able to come together as a family, to study, to, to reach deep into the heart of what you're trying to tell us. And I just pray that our hearts were uh, affected by this. Every uh, thing was hidden in our heart that we won't sin against you. We pray for our live streamers uh, that they will have received exactly what you have for them and that they'll be eager to follow you to want to know what the truth is because the truth does set us free i mean i i see that every day in my life and we thank you for that we thank you that we have a yahweh that loves us so much that he never gives up on us that his grace is truly sufficient but we've got to be in a position to deserve that grace mm -hmm. So we love you today, and I just thank you for everything that you're doing for each one of us. Mm -hmm. I lift up Leanne and Gordon as they yes, travel, Father. and I just ask that you will help Leanne as she continues uh, to strengthen her and encourage her. Mm -hmm. And for the life houses, uh, they're yours, and we just thank you for them. We thank you that <coughs> there's a little bit, a little nation right here. Uh, that you set aside that that would have never lasted if it had not been yours but you took care of it for 30 years so we thank you for that continue to uh, strengthen vicky and encourage her and bless her because she takes so much time out of her week with all the other things she has to do 
to come and to share with us what you've shown her. So just continue to lift her up and strengthen her. And um, we thank you and we praise you. Help each one in this room to uh, stay on the path and walk with a, uh, such an excitement to follow you and such a hunger to learn more each day to uh, spend time with you, each one of us, because like we said, our salvation we have to work out with fear and trembling. Hmm. We love you today and we praise you in the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. 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 And you guys go and have a rest of a great Shabbat day. It is uh, beautiful here, I think. It looks like it's cloudy. Never mind, it's cloudy. I think we've all. It's still beautiful though because it's not raining. But even if it were raining, it'd still be beautiful because it's Shabbat. So we love you all. Um, uh, thank you for joining us today, and we will see you next week. Shabbat shalom. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Yeah. Yeah.